and thank you for Olympus for inviting me to talk on uh, the RDI, so red dichromatic imaging, your new safeguard uh, for bronchoscopy. Uh, I'm Ricky Thacker, I'm a chest physician from uh, University College London Hospital, and here it is on a lovely sunny day. Uh, so um, the really interesting thing and uh, really nice thing to see uh, is how bronchoscopic technology and bronchoscopy imaging has really integrated into a lot of the things that we do. So these are just some of the procedures that we do. But the ones I've highlighted in green, so whether that's e-bus and ultrasound technology or in, uh, using autofluorescence, and we've just heard from Bruno about uh, navigation, the technology that goes into this almost just seamlessly starts to integrate into our, our clinical practice. And uh, this is a new feature, as, as Felix has said, on called red digraph. Uh, red uh, dichromatic imaging. <clears throat> so Olympus developed this. Now a normal processor will have five lamps. So it will have a, a red, amber, green, a blue and a violet lamp. And those uh, colors come together through a filter to give us a white light and a white light bronchoscopy. And what this does is it exploits the longer wavelengths of light. So we have your green, your amber and red. They go through an RDI filter. And then that you get very, very specific wavelengths of light, uh, which hit the mucosa. And as it hits the mucosa, it's going to be absorbed much deeper. And you're going to be able to see deeper into the mucosa than you would have been otherwise been able to with white light. And then the processor, as the image comes back, it actually processes it and makes the difference look even more clearer, as I'll show you now. So what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is... To, to use this to reduce the risk of bleeding, because in fact, and as I'll show you, it really highlights where these sort of deep blood vessels are deeper in the tissue. And, and the goal and the hope is that it leads to a safer and a more efficient bronchoscopy. And it's all quite easy because it's just a little button on the top of the bronchoscope, you press it and it switches straight from white light into RDI. Um, so you can just do it seamlessly without uh, even thinking about it. And I'm gonna show you how it could be used in both diagnostic uh, and therapeutic bronchoscopy. So here <clears throat> in this diagram, uh, you have your mucosa and these long wavelengths of light are going to be, will penetrate deep or then be reflected back. Now, when there is a deep blood vessel, what we'll see is a much, much more um, a deeper absorption of your amber and your red lights. And what you'll then see is when there is a, 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 a difference is this sort of deep blood vessel which looks more red uh, on a background of this amber and, and that will highlight where the deep blood vessels are. So this is thank you to Arshang Valipal for this image and you can see really clearly here so when we have our white light bronchoscopy on the left and you have this deep blood vessel and if we were taking a biopsy actually we want to avoid um, putting our forceps there because you don't want to counter um, interact uh, uh, see any bleeding. This is a case of a young patient uh, who I scoped on uh, this Monday, in fact, uh, who had a tumor blocking her right main bronchus. Um, this is a young non-smoker uh, who also had brain metastases. You can see on the left with white light imaging, everything looks red. We want to do a biopsy using some forceps and think, gosh, where am I even going to start? Well, we switch the RDI on. You can see all those on the sort of left-hand side of that tumor all those deep blood vessels and there are particular areas where there are less deep blood vessels so we're not going to see the superficial vessels um, on the RDI and you may want to use the forceps to target those specific areas. In fact with this lady she also was very septic and uh, and had a lot of pus trapped in her lung and had a collapsed right lower lobe and middle lobe so I proceeded to laser her uh, the tumor away as you can see here. At the end of these procedures, we all know, we look down, everything is red, as you can see on the left of the screen, you're not, you want to make sure there's no bleeding before you, you extubate and you finish. You switch the RDI on, what it does, it sort of removes all that superficial blood and you don't see it so much anymore. And you can see, and I'll show you some uh, videos in a moment, of you can actually see if there is any bleeding, you might be able to pick it up much more quicker and it just gives you that, you know, it gives you that reassurance that you can come out and extubate and finish. So this is um, now, how does this interact? How does this come into uh, therapeutic bronchoscopy? So 
This is almost a decade ago, so this is using the 260 series uh, scopes, but even then the image was pretty good. Um, and this is uh, a patient who had a metastatic carcinoid uh, who presented with airway obstruction. As you can see, there's multifocal disease everywhere. And how would we have approached this in the past? Um, would have been to use laser ablation as we did for this case, um, or sometimes mechanical debulking. And whilst laser works really well in this case, as you can see, it sort of coagulates and ablates the tumor as we go along. We all know that when we're looking at carcinoid in the airway, bleeding is a, is a problem and it can cause a problem. And you can see everything starts to become a bit red. There's a lot of bleeding. And this, because, and this is a stressful situation because you want to make sure that you, you're dealing with any bleeding. Um, and, uh, but, but really you want that reassurance that, that you, you're, you've coagulated all the bleeding areas. Anyway, for this patient, uh, we had a very good result, um, as you can see here, and we managed to sort of clear most of the disease, which about a month later, as we know, carcinoid responds so well to laser, um, about a, month, a few months later, uh, the disease had almost uh, completely disappeared. Can we detect bleeding? So when we have a bleeding vessel, or a bleeding point, there'll be blood which is going to be sort of sitting on the surface of the airway. It's going to be dilute by um, sort of a bit of saline and topical adrenaline, but there'll still be a focal bleeding point. And what happens here <clears throat> is that there's going, where there's a bleeding vessel, the high concentration of hemoglobin will absorb a lot more of that amber light. So what reflects back and what we see on the image is a lot more proportional red light. And so here, this is a GI picture, you can see the bleeding vessel, uh, which is this undiluted area. Um, now this is a GI scope and I'll show you a, a video in just a moment. But what it means is you can isolate um, the, the bleeding points uh, in, a, in a sort of a pool of blood, as it were. Okay. <clears throat> So this is a patient that we bronchoscoped, in fact, this Tuesday. Uh, so this is a 60-year-old man. Uh, he came in with hemoptysis to the emergency department. He's never smoked. Uh, he had lots of fevers. So the emergency department treated him with antibiotics and a range of CT. And you can see there's a tumor blocking the right middle lobe bronchus and sort of extends all the way out to the anterior part of the uh, thorax. So we thought it could be a bronchoseal. This is what we found when we looked inside. So this is the medial segment of the right middle lobe occluded by, you know, what looks very much like a typical carcinoid. Um, but you can see when we put the RDI on, on the left here, at sort of nine o'clock, these deeper blood vessels. So I started by ablating those, coagulating those first with electrocautery before taking a biopsy. Okay. So this is very much an unedited video and sort of what we would really see. Um, and I wanted to keep it unedited because I, I want to show you how things look when we look down the bronchoscope and when we do these sort of procedures. So I proceeded to, for this patient, take a cryobiopsy from his tumor. So here we go, we're just freezing the tumor here and then uh, just with cryo extraction, just lifting it out. In this patient, we didn't use a rigid bronchoscope, and that's because he also had a lesion at C7, and he had a lot of pain, so we didn't want to hyperextend his neck. Uh, so we, we just did a safe uh, uh, intubation with a flexible ET tube. You go back in, and there's bleeding, and there's bleeding, and there's bleeding, and this is a really stressful situation. You think, gosh, what am I going to do? Uh, everything looks red, um, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, and but here we go. With a flick of a button, we flip to the RDI. It takes away all that surface blood, and you can now just start seeing that very focal area uh, which is bleeding. So I just put the blunt for electrical tree, uh, blunt forceps, this is the Olympus electrical tree, through the channel of the bronchoscope, saw where it was bleeding from, and then just coagulated it. Much, much less stressful. You can see when I switch back to the red 
back to white light, you see all this red, and actually it's very distracting and very stressful. We switch back to RDI again. A little bit of saline will come in now just to clear this scope, which has got a bit of debris on it. Bleeding stopped. I'm relaxed, patient safe. So, what are my take home message is advances in imaging technology, they penetrate all types of bronchoscopy that we do. And RDI is a very new technology for me. Um, it does reduce my stress. It helps me just, you know, it takes away all that surface blood, find the bleeding point, target it. And so it definitely helps in my therapeutic intervention. But also it may prevent bleeding by showing you deeper blood vessels that you may not want to necessarily biopsy or you want to sort of steer away from that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, showing us uh, new features. By the way, it's not the only new features you find on that processor. If you want to see that processor, if you want to get information about additional optical support Olympus offers you, just visit the booth because there, there's another feature which is my favorite feature. Uh, it's an illumination uh, advantage, I believe. But you showed us nicely how RDA works to have a better view to the vessels. So is it complicated uh, to, to use that new feature or is just pressing a button and then see one, teach one? Or do I need a learning curve for that? I'm able to see it directly. No, no, not really. So uh, we sort of just integrated it almost, I integrated it almost straight away. Button at the top of the bronchoscope, you press it, it switches from white light to RDI. And as you saw in that last video, it instantly just changes straight away. Um, and you can do that while you're still doing your procedural work. So you don't have to really think too much about it. I think really that um, the Olympus engineers did a great job. For most of you are familiar with NBI, which was launched when they launched the previous version. And it's just adding one more wavelength. It's just amber, which they added in their spectrum. And then by adding a new wavelength analysis, they were able to show us really the vessels in a better way. So do you use the technique um, in, the, in situations like that, where you showed us the cryo extraction before you do the cryo to see if there are a lot of vessels? So do you decide based on the eye which biopsy technique you use? Yep, certainly. So um, in this gentleman's case here, I did the RDI before I started the procedure and it, those deep blood vessels, I didn't show you the video of that, I coagulated all of those first before I took the biopsy. But as you know, carcinoid tumours, they, you know, they, they yeah. are very vascular. Uh, so. they, they're normally bleeding, yeah. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you do. Yeah. Um, so there, are there any questions? So again, just um, look to the new features Olympus added at the booth because I think uh, for the practical doing, you don't need it in every case, but there are cases where you really have additional information before you run in a disaster. And also what you showed, when it starts already bleeding, it's quite helpful to see where the bleeding is coming from. Or Definitely. Thank you. So RDA, new option to have maybe a safe outcome for you and for your patients when it starts bleeding. Thanks a lot.